Hi folks, my name is Trisha Johnson and I am a licensed professional counselor in Colorado as well as a registered yoga teacher specializing in mindfulness and trauma-informed care. Uh, today it is my joy to teach you a basic sun salutation. Um, there's a lot of folks who maybe are curious about yoga but apprehensive about attending a yoga class because they don't really know how they're supposed to do it or are unfamiliar with postures or alignment cues. So today I'm gonna teach you just a basic sun salutation, hopefully to offer you a little bit of leveraged confidence for when you finally try out that yoga class you've been wanting to. So let's begin by finding a comfortable seated position so we can ground and center. So at the beginning of any yoga practice or any meditative practice, it is always beneficial to just take a moment to ground and center. So taking a moment to steady your breathing Notice your surroundings. Notice the current moment. Let's go ahead and check in with our bone stacking alignment, which is a very important part of yoga. So making sure we're lengthening through the crown of the head, that ears are over shoulders, shoulders are stacked over hips, and the spine is nice and long and tall. Good, maintaining the integrity of the spine so that we can make sure to get nice deep breaths throughout our practice. Good, let's take three deep breaths together. Sigh it out the mouth. Inhale for two. Good, one last deep breath together. Good. Let's make our way onto our hands and knees for cat cow so that we can warm up our spine for our sun salutation. When in cat-cow, we are also always looking for bone stacking alignment. So making sure we have shoulders aligned over elbows, over wrists, and making sure we have hips aligned over knees. So for cat-cow, we're just going to take our time lubricating the spine and on each inhale, arching the back, lifting the tailbone, lifting the chin. As we exhale, rounding the back, tucking the chin, tucking the tailbone, and drawing the belly button in towards the spine, pressing the shoulder blades towards the sky. Good, inhale, cat, lift tailbone, arch the back, lift the chin. Exhale, round the back, tuck the chin and tailbone, press the shoulder blades towards the sky. Good, noticing how cat cow feels for you, and if you prefer to lean into one shoulder over the other, but for the most part, cat-cow is just an important part of our practice to lubricate the spine to make sure it's protected throughout our sun salutation. So from here, let's go ahead and extend the left foot out behind us. Just gentle pressure into the toes, warming up the calf and hamstring, taking a deep breath wherever we feel tension. Good. Exhale, gentle release. Same thing, other side. Extend the right leg out behind you, pressing the toes into the mat. Gentle pressure in the calf and hamstring. Good, and release. Good, for our first downward facing dog, we're going to tuck the toes, and this is important, press the fingers into the mat. A lot of times we dump all of our weight into our wrists and that can set us up for injury. So making sure we're pressing our fingers into the mat, actively engaging all of these muscles. So good, digging in with our fingers, tucking the toes, lifting the tailbone towards the sky. And then gently, if you can, pressing the chest towards the thighs. If you can't touch your heels to the mat, and if you need to keep your knees bent, that's perfectly okay. Listening to your body and trusting what it's capable of in this moment. If you can extend, try to extend the knees. If you need to, maybe bend right, bend left. Good. Downward facing dog is a resting posture. And it's also helpful in regulating symptoms of anxiety, helping to give us a perspective shift. So pressing the fingers into the mat, pressing the chest back towards the thighs, actively engaging the shoulder blades, noticing the space between the shoulders directly behind the heart, actively engaging all the muscles in the shoulders, breathing space into the calves and hamstrings wherever we feel tension. Deep breath here. And then gently walking the hands back towards the feet for our first forward fold. Now for forward fold, our feet should be about hip distance apart. That's approximately two fists based on your anatomy. 
Allowing the top half of the body to hang over the lower half. So again, for you, if this means a gentle bend in the knee so the top half of the body can sit on the lower half, that's perfectly acceptable. Allowing the crown of the head to fall towards the floor. So instead of looking at the feet, looking behind the legs. Perhaps shake your head yes, shake your head no. The purpose of forward fold is to create space along the back, create space in the muscles that run alongside the spine, releasing tension in the back of the neck. Good, see if you can relinquish control in the muscles in the back of the neck. See if you can breathe space into the lumbar spine. Remembering that this is a resting and restorative posture. And then gently and slowly placing a bend in the knees and rolling up the spine nice and easy, making sure not to come up too fast because we don't want a head rush. Good, and then meeting at the top of our mat. Once again, feet are about hip distance apart. Nice, long, tall spine. So for our sun salutation, we're going to inhale the arms overhead. If you'd like, you can put a gentle bend in the spine here. If that's not for you, then don't worry about it. Exhaling, hinging at the hips for a swan dive to forward fold. Good. Once again, allowing the head to hang heavy. We wanna relinquish some control in the back of the neck. Good. Inhaling for flat back. So you can place your hands on your shins and then imitate that arched back we did for cat cow. But here it should make your back flat, elongating through the crown of the head. Good. If you're able to and it's within your practice, you could try gorilla, placing the hands underneath the feet and lifting for flat back here. Otherwise, keep it on the shins. Good. From here, we're going to place the hands down on the mat and step back into plank. Good, finding our bone stacking alignment, shoulders over elbows, over wrists, finding our stability. We're gonna lower down into chaturanga. For chaturanga, we keep our elbows close to our rib cage instead of away from the rib cage like you would in a typical push up. So inhaling here, lowering down with control, keeping the elbows close to the rib cage using those triceps. Chaturanga, good. From here, lowering down onto the stomach, flipping the feet, Inhaling for Cobra, pressing the hands into the mat, releasing control over the lower half of the body, right? So not using any muscles in the legs, just the lower back and upper back. If you'd like a full upward facing dog, you can press the tops of the feet into the mat, lifting yourself off of the mat. If that's not in your practice today, then that's okay. Stick with Cobra. From here, Tucking the toes, pressing the fingers into the mat, lifting the tailbone towards the sky. Once again, seeing if you can bring the heels to the mat. If you can't, that's okay. Maybe just walking the dog again, creating more motion in our ankles and our calves and our hamstrings, digging the fingers into the mat for support, taking a look at the space between the hands and gently stepping forward. With a bend in the knees, reverse swan dive, inhale all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. And that is our sun salutation. Most sun salutations will have you take a lunge in the middle. I have found for me, it's more balanced to negate that and take an extra moment to gain strength in plank and lower down into chaturanga. If you'd like to add lunges into your sun salutation, absolutely do what your body needs. If that's too much for you, I'd recommend starting off here with an adapted or adjusted sun salutation until you learn how your body moves in and out of each posture and what's best for you. Those are the foundations for a sun salutation. You may notice that in other practices and other sun salutations, there are lunges, high or low. Um, I have taken those out of my sun salutations just to make them a little bit more adaptable and easy for beginners. If you'd like to add a lunge into your sun salutation, go for it. Um, if that feels like a lot for you, then maybe just stick with this alternative until you learn how your body responds to each of these postures and until you have a better idea of how to move in and out of them 
um, gracefully and calmly. Thank you so much for joining me today. I wish you all the best of luck in your practice. Namaste.